if America right now is center of gravity orange, leaning a little bit green, already evolved out of stage blue, what does that mean based on this model? It means that in the next 50 years, the country is moving in this direction. So what you need to come to accept as a conservative is that no matter how much you whine and bitch and moan and kick and scream, no matter what excuses you make, no matter how you vote, no matter how much you resist, you can even start a civil war if you want. But none of that will prevent the country from moving towards green over the next 50 years. It's going to happen. You can't change that. You can only resist it and slow it down. And if you do, you're going to create more suffering and more people will die and be harmed as a result of that. We are facing genuine and real problems in the world that cannot be solved at stage orange. The limitations of orange are becoming abundantly clear with climate change, with pollution, with giant corporate monopolies, with Wall Street, with crashes of the economy. These things are not sustainable and this will not persist into the future. Society must find solutions beyond that. If you can't see and acknowledge that, you're stuck. And this is a big problem with Jordan Peterson's politics and with some of the, some of his fans who follow him for that reason. Now, not all of his fans follow him for the political stuff. I think a lot of, a lot of his fans just like him for the psychology stuff. They might not even know his political opinions very much if they only watch his psychology lectures. I've, I've personally met people like that who don't even know Jordan Peterson's politics. The problem is that if you keep listening to him long enough, you will eventually imbibe his politics. You'll absorb it through osmosis without even consciously realizing what happened. Because he rails against stage green quite a bit. He sneaks it into to, to almost all of his talks in one form or another. Whether he's talking about equality of opportunity or hierarchies or lobsters or whatever, he sneaks it in there. Or he talks about feminism or he talks about gender fluidity and he sneaks it in there. So what's not being acknowledged is that if we're at stage orange, the next stage is green, and we have not realized or actualized green yet. So this idea that, well, I don't like green, therefore let's just skip green to yellow. It's not going to fly. That means you created a shadow that's going to create dysfunction, suffering, death, and evil. If you do that. Instead, what needs to happen is you need to recognize that you have certain biases and prejudices. You have certain fears of stage green. You need to set those aside. You need to work on really understanding green, integrate it, and then we can move on to yellow. But that's not going to happen collectively for another 100 years. We've been facing over the last 10 or 20 years as society is starting to inch towards green. We've been encountering so much backlash and resistance from stage blue and orange. That's effectively what happened, for example, um, with the whole... Uh, MAGA movement, the, all the alt-right movements. And we have many movements around the world now towards authoritarianism. Why is that? Because as the whole world is shifting more and more towards green, people are scared of it. They don't understand it. The media is fear-mongering to them about it. And therefore, the way they vote is they vote regressively. And then this leads to uh, some of the, these sorts of regressive nationalistic movements we see around the world. We see it in Russia. We see it in Germany. We see some of it in, um, in Poland, in Brazil, in, in, in China, and elsewhere. This is not only an American problem. Now, am I really worried that we're going to go into fascism? No. Not in the developed world. In America, in Canada, and so forth, there's never going to be fascism. It's not a legitimate concern because what you have to understand is that human psyches are all evolving together. There, it's not a legitimate concern that we're going to go back to Soviet communism because we've, we've already exhausted that and seen its limitations and grown beyond it. The socialism of today, what conservatives call socialism, is really more like social democracy. It's more like Scandinavia. And Scandinavia is a pretty good place to live. Now, it's got its problems. I'm not saying it doesn't have its excesses. You can, you can cite me some articles and examples of excesses in Scandinavia. Sure. But I can cite you a lot more of the excesses of stage orange in America. And if you were the average person, you would rather live in 
Scandinavia than you would in America. See, America is really great to live in if you are like in the top 5%, then it's awesome. You're so free just to do anything. You can buy politicians, you can buy corporate jets, you pay low taxes, you can avoid taxes, you can do tax shelters, you can do capital gains. And like, it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a wonderland for the rich. But if you're not in that top 5%, then it's not so great. So if you, if you were randomly rolling the dice, like <laughs> before you were born, you're going to choose where to incarnate. Should I incarnate into America or into Scandinavia? You would, you would be stupid to pick America because the chances that you're going to roll that dice, you're not going to get snake eyes. You're going to get something else and uh, you're not going to be in the top 5%. And uh, in that case, better to live in Scandinavia. So this is something to keep in mind. Now, um, see, the reason that the country will inevitably move towards green is because orange is unsustainable. What we're doing with CO2 emissions, what we're doing with the markets, um, the wealth gap inequality that's happening between the rich and the poor, all of these things <coughs> are unsustainable. They can only continue maybe for another 30 years. Maybe for the next 30 years, we can still keep pushing orange, but the more we push it, the more it's gonna break down. And eventually it will become so unsustainable that everyone will start to acknowledge that we gotta go green. And it's already happening but there's also backlash because many people don't understand what's really going on. They're clueless about this model. They're scared. People in the media are feeding them paranoia. Uh, and, and these, these fantasies of, of evil socialism and, and communism from the cold war era. These are biases and holdovers from the cold war era. And, and this is making people so confused that they don't know how to vote properly or think properly about these issues. So, green is going to happen. The only question is, will you resist it or not? Why resist? Why not open yourself to it? Understand it? And then whatever limits and problems there are, we'll deal with them. Why don't you trust that we can deal with them? Why are you paranoid about it? That would be my question, Jordan Peterson. Why do you have so little faith in mankind? And of course he would say, well, because a hundred million people were killed in the last century. Yeah, exactly. A hundred million people were killed in the last century based on stage blue and orange. And actually way more were killed because we didn't even count orange fully into that stage. Don't be so preoccupied about the, the boogeyman of green that you overlook the evils of the current system. The current system truly does have plenty of evils in it. 